Down south, we called it when I was a kid. Tail Creek flows through it sometimes, from Buffalo Lake to the Red Deer River. It's called the Tail of the Buffalo because supposedly from above, the lake resembles a buffalo. I wonder how they knew that, as the lake was named before human flight was achieved. It was a place to explore, uninhabited, wild, with lots of nooks and crannies. There were bottomless pits filled with bentonite mud. I remember my dad warning me to be careful around them as he stuck a ten-foot stick all the way down into the mud. I was wonderfully afraid. My great-great-granddad came to the Tail Creek, finding it so full of fish when they were spawning you could toss them into the banks with a pitchfork. There are no fish anymore. There are beaver. They're hard on the trees, but without them there is no water. It's a difficult choice. The government put in a weir to hold back the lake water so the creek doesn't flow anymore unless we get a lot of rain. At the times when the creek flows, it puts me in a good mood. When it doesn't, I'm optimistic that it will again. I can help. I want to preserve what is original and make better what is not. Help trees and grasses of all sorts hold back the soil and wind, keeping the moisture from sinking through the sand, feeding the birds and the bees and the pigs and the chickens, feeding the cows and the geese and us. There's a hill I sit on, a little patch of leftover prairie wool, with the wildflowers above and ancient arrowheads below, overlooking the creek valley. I used to pretend I was the first to see this. I know now even my ancestors weren't the first to see it. I imagine looking at the distant herds of buffalo waiting and planning the hunt. I can see the lake and the river valley where the creek ends up. I wonder why the creek cut through the hill instead of going down to the east. I clue in that the glacier's edge was here, filling the void behind me and forcing the creek over this hill, cutting it in half. I imagine the woolly mammoths in the ice. So I imagine a cow with hair like those woolly mammoths. They exist. They come from Scotland, but they fit here. I left to explore the world with the comfort of knowing there was a place to call home. I returned here recently with someone who sees like me. We imagined together. So we've got these funny looking cows, we're going to plant a bunch of trees and see what happens. We don't call it down south anymore. We're going to call it home. I'm wonderfully not afraid. <laughs>